born Kate McMullen in 1906, the stigma of illegitimacy in those days causing the social rejection that scarred her early life. Brought up by her grandparents, her older sister was really her mother, her father then unknown. It's only veneer that is Catherine Cookson. It's from Katie McMullen that stems all the books that I've written, because she was the one that soaked up this environment. I don't class myself as a novelist. I class myself as a storyteller. I, most of my stories come from here. So 75% come from here. The rest come from here. The characters really, do, really don't change. The circumstances do, but there's still the same passions, there's still the same greed, there's still the same compassion kindness, bigotry, the lot. That bigotry forged her determination to succeed, and she started here. She really educated herself in this building, actually. She, uh, she came here and read, and read, and read, and read, you know, because she was determined. Her motto was, um, I shall succeed, and by God I will. And she did, and she did, and I think she's remarkable. Exhibitions here and at the Word in South Shields are marking the 20th anniversary of her death, a reminder of her extraordinary achievements. Catherine Cookson remained the most borrowed author in the UK for 17 years. That continued until four years after her death. And she still is the UK's most borrowed author over the last 20 years, with more than 27 million library loans between 1996 and 2016. In the last couple of years, two new titles found after her death have been snapped up by publishers. One a short novel, the other her final memoir. A quiet philanthropist, Catherine helped many causes, being particularly generous to the city's hospitals and Newcastle University. She gave more than a million pounds to medical research and helped develop treatment for a rare blood disorder she suffered from. Catherine Cookson was a, a lifelong supporter of our hospital and has great value in that but also through suffering a genetic disease and supporting our genetics team at an early stage in its development she was one of the key players in developing the Centre for Life uh, and so she's our Kate too. The Hatton Gallery in Newcastle saved in 1997 by a quarter of a million pound donation the Hatton Gallery was one place that was marked for closure. And without Catherine Cookson personally stepping in and donating a, a, a vast sum of money, we would have lost the Hatton Gallery, all it contains and all it means to the university, and the incredible legacy that it's given to all of the students and professors and the public who've benefited from it in all those years since. Encouraging other writers was a cause close to her heart. Val Wood, now a best-selling author herself, won the first Catherine Cookson Prize for fiction 25 years ago. I never really expected to win. Well, why would I? This is my very first book. It made such an impact on my life. Here I was now with a career. The fact that she had created this niche, this particular type of genre, showed that a lot of people wanted to read books like that. The exhibition at The Word is part of the Great Exhibition of the North Inspired By programme, celebrating innovation and outstanding people who've made their mark. You can go anywhere in the world and they've all heard of Catherine Cookson. She's left a tremendous legacy behind, and not only in her writing, but also in her charitable trust too. Today, the Catherine Cookson Trust and Foundation continue to make donations in the Northeast and across the UK. Her legacy still touching lives and inspiring others to follow their dream. Julie Harrison, ITV News.